aware that after those amazing cakes that you had before, you had a sugar high, and right now you have a sugar low. Okay, and I'm the only thing between you and Patricia Yates who's coming next. So I'm gonna work on this quite quickly now. I'm gonna talk about how do we better market and communicate sustainability as part of building resilience and making our tourism industry much better, much more sustainable. We already heard earlier on, sustainability is um, featuring much more strongly in all the data that we collect. This is data from uh, booking.com, but the same comes across with Expedia, we saw earlier with Skyscanner and so on. Everybody says sustainability is becoming more important to every single one of us. That's what we say when we answer the question as. The truth is we're all hypocrites, okay? The truth is, and you can see all sorts of things that we do. We morally justify every time we choose to have beef as opposed to having vegetables because it just feels nicer. We sanitize our language and we say, well, I'm just popping across to Edinburgh and I'm choosing to fly as opposed to using the Caledonian sleeper. Um, we compare ourselves with somebody else who flew further than us and say, well, I'm not as bad as this other fella. Look, you know, they came from Australia. I only came from Germany and so on. And when somebody comes along and says to you, well, couldn't we do better? What we tend to do is we point fingers at them and rather than saying, I could do better, it's much easier to blame the person who is delivering the bad news. And we see this time and time again, and that's the reason why very often I've just thought, we have followed the wrong route to try to change people's behavior. This is not gonna become an academic lecture, by the way. I'm gonna get through this quite quickly. But normally what we do is we tend to assume that people are at the top left-hand side. We are unaware that what we are doing is bad for the planet and probably bad for our health as well. And we assume that the route to changing people's behavior is making them aware that what they're doing is bad, so step A, and after that, they'll do step B. Frankly, if we did that, nobody would smoke. There would be no drinking and driving. There would be no teenage pregnancies. There would be no sorts of things. Because nobody can say smoking is good for you anymore, right? So making people feel guilty about what they're doing right now is not the route to creating behavior change. It's not gonna work for many, many people anyway. Flight shaming is not gonna change the way in which any of us fly. We just choose to go on holiday without putting it on social media, right? So. The key here is we need to follow the CD route. We have to find a way that the sustainable product is better for you, that is better on quality, on price, on location, on convenience, right? We have to find a way that people want to buy it because it feels good. You remember when you used to buy fair trade bananas and what you were buying was really, really expensive compost? By the time you got them home, they weren't good enough, right? Now, of course, things have improved, but we need to make sure that we're doing this with every single thing that we say is sustainable. Because otherwise, people hear the word sustainable and it's like, ah, it may not be so good. Had you been told today, lunch from 12 to one is going to be sustainable food, many of you would have turned up at five to one and would have said, I'm just gonna eat somewhere else. Because when you hear sustainable food, none of you know what it means or how it's going to help you. When I did research, this was from England, but I imagine it would not be so different here. I looked at businesses, the type of business that, for example, have the green tourism um, scheme membership, okay, the accreditation. And those kind of businesses, I found out that more than 70% of the actions that I know they're definitely doing, because I've seen it from the audits, they never ever communicate them. And when I interviewed them, they said, we think it makes us look less competent. Right? We, we think the customers see it as a compromise. Now the key here is I have to find a way as a marketeer and communicator of helping these businesses to understand how to communicate well. Why? Because the flip side is the big boys are over communicating and greenwashing. When I've done audits of what these guys do and I've spent eight hours in each one of their hotels, I have found that at least 25% of the content that the head office says my hotel should be doing is never happening. And this is worst in franchise hotels. When the hotels are owned by the, by the brand, it's better. When the hotels are franchised, it's not. And we just heard about Marriott and their growth earlier on. You know what, of the 8,000 hotels, they're becoming asset light. They don't want to own the buildings, they don't want to manage the buildings, they have some brand standards, but the sustainability content of those brand standards is becoming less and less and less. And the same is happening with Hilton and Intercontinental and the whole lot. I'm also finding that actually the majority of hotel groups choose to not even have a corporate social responsibility program. 
right? So what we looked at here, I did some work for United Nations Environment. We looked at the 50 largest other groups in the world, and we found out how many of them have CSR reports that are transparent. My first surprise is that only 18 out of the 50 largest hotel groups in the world even bother to have a sustainability program. So much for all consumers want it. Clearly, as an industry, we're not really responding to that just yet. And when we do respond, we, play, we pay lip service. So on this column, you can see if they engage stakeholders, do they ask the industry, consumers, their staff, what do they think the CSR program should include? Uh -uh, not great. On, on this one, on the horizontal, you've got materiality analysis. Is the content of the reports material or immaterial to what the stakeholders actually want in the first place? And you can see some people are doing OK. And you can see I can't even spell the word Wyndham. Okay? But you know, some others really are not. So I'm now doing this again. And I'm going back to the hotel groups. And I'm showing them the data and saying, couldn't we do a little bit better? So I tend to work with a. Um, you know, Sustainability Hospitality Alliance and others, then show them the results. They may not like me for it, but they pay attention. I made even fewer friends when I looked at what the airline industry is doing. I'm not, I'm not even, right? I won't even talk about cruising today, because I'm banned now, right? But with the airlines, I analyze how much greenwashing is there in their communications around voluntary carbon offsetting. Oh boy, is it bad. It's not only bad because, look, only 37 out of 116 airlines offer it. By the way, in 2016, it was 42. We've dropped. We've not increased. OK? And is, but also, the way in which we communicate is really poor. Every single message they're communicating is fibbing, is um, exaggerating the benefits. There's a irrelevant content. There's a lesser of two evils. They're worshipping labels that are worthless. And we analyzed every single sentence that talked about voluntary carbon offsetting from every single one of those airlines. That's how much of a nerd me and my colleagues are. <laughs> okay? So the challenge that we've got here is how do we improve what the industry is doing? Now you're thinking, it's fine because the public sector will come and save the day. OK, I know the English correct way to say is there is some room for improvement <laughs> in what the public sector could do. Right? I'm Spanish. I could basically tell you something else, but I'm not. You know, there's a microphone, there's a camera. I'm not going to do that. But let me just put in context. I analyzed 101 national tourism strategies. Right? That took some time. They are 100 page documents and so on. 100% okay? of them mentioned sustainability as being super important. 55% of them dedicated more than one paragraph to sustainability content. And 2% of them had actual key performance indicators on sustainability. Sorry, how did we go from the executive summary of 100% of them inserting the word sustainability and saying it's important, but it was just shoehorned in, to 2% of them actually having key performance indicators? Right? I mean, this is not greenwashing. This is far, far worse than greenwashing. Now, I can say this in Scotland because actually I know the work that Janie Newman and the team of Visit Scotland are doing, and you guys are far, far ahead of what every other single country that I have seen is doing work in this. Slovenia, Norway, New Zealand, yourselves, you are at the top. Okay? So I'm really happy to be here and to be able to do this. But there's such a long way to go with everybody else. Now, part of the challenge is, a sustainable hotel room typically looks like this. It's not Edinburgh, by the way. This is Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Can you feel it? No. no. This could be anywhere in the world, right? So what we know from hotels that are certified as being sustainable is a number of things. First of all, they have a 20% lower carbon footprint, energy cost, water cost, waste production per person per night than a non-certified hotel. If Edinburgh wants to increase the number of tourists but decrease the negative environmental impact that you've got, please get every single hotel bed certified under green tourism or an equivalent. Okay? Because you can increase the number of tourists by 20% without having to increase your footprint. So why not? But those hotels tend to be corporate franchises, tend to be large hotels, they tend to be very well managed. We've seen all the data. Hotels that are certified have a higher customer satisfaction than hotels that are not certified. Again, really good news. 
We tend to have higher than average prices. Again, for the city, that's also a good thing. But they're usually used by business travelers. However, they don't look sustainable. They don't take very good photos. So when I've been working with people like Booking.com, and we look at how do we put labels on the, the hotels in Booking that have sustainability credentials, what we find is that we get an increasing click-through. People want to see those hotels, but then they click on the hotel and they see that, and the conversion rate does not improve. Right? So what we are getting, actually, those hotels get penalized, because you get more people looking at them, but fewer people or the same number booking them, and the algorithm, Right? which designs everything nowadays, essentially means that you just can't you know, make it work for you. So let's imagine for a second, and we're going to run out of time, but I'll just cut the end of the presentation. Let's imagine for a second that we are here at my wedding, and I'm the groom, and the bride's going to turn up in a second. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. Okay? And she comes to the front, and I have to come up with my wedding vows. Let's imagine the single most creative thing I can say to her to convince me is, darling, I'll be a good husband whenever possible. <laughs> Who's buying this? Who's in? Right? Because this is the message I found in one of the websites of one of the hotels in Edinburgh this morning. In fact, it said, I, we serve local Scottish food whenever possible. Sorry, whenever possible is like a getaway clause written by a lawyer. Right? Oh, and when it's not possible, that's fine. It like, happens to be 99% of the time. But look, it wasn't possible. It was more expensive. It was whatever. Okay? We can do a lot better than this. So as businesses, there's a number of ways in which we can do this. We can help. We can change the way in which we communicate so we can reduce impacts. Did you notice today when you had lunch, the first thing that was made available to you was beef? Sorry. Behavioral scientists would tell us, you put the unsustainable food, and beef is it at the end. It's got the highest possible cut from carbon footprint of anything you're going to eat all week except prawns. Okay? Prawns, bad. Beef, also bad. Right? <laughs> Put the vegetables at the beginning. Make sure that people fill up their plate with vegetables. And only when they get to the end and they have little space left, because you made the vegetables look exciting, then they'll put a little bit of beef in it. You put the beef at the beginning and people have half a plate of rice and beef. Like, come on, we're in Scotland. No, let's not do that. Okay? No smoking. It makes your breath smell and your teeth go horrid, as well as being a danger to the people who live in our forest. When I saw this, it was not at this height for parents to see it. It was at this height for my children to see it. And they came to people, and you could see them saying, Ew, are your teeth yellow and horrid? It was absolutely brilliant. Okay? So remember, we have to find ways of getting to communicate in ways that are much more creative. This particular um, attraction used to have a sign that said, fine, 200 pounds if you're caught smoking. It didn't work. Every parent, every uncle and auntie knows the best behavior, you know, like the best police of your behavior is children and grandchildren. Okay? And like these, I could go through some of the other examples afterwards. By the way, this device here that says Aguardio, you know, there's a world, and then when you turn your shower on, there's a timer that starts telling you how many seconds and minutes you've spent in the shower. We have put this in hotels in four different countries. We know that people reduce the length of the shower in hotels by 15%. Pre-COVID, this meant a saving of 90 pounds per hotel room per year on energy. The water is not expensive. The energy to heat the water really is. Okay? So it helps to try to change some of the behavior. We know we want to attract more customers, but that's going to be really quite hard. And at the moment, we don't have the data yet on how to do it. Also, the data varies, much, varies a lot between different contexts. So, for example, you can see this comes from um, Skyscanner has exactly the same, by the way, but this comes from uh, Google Flights. I point there, but the guy from Skyscanner is not there anymore. But he used to be there. Okay? But, but essentially, Skyscanner, um, you know, Trip, Booking.com, um, you know, Expedia, uh, TripAdvisor, I'm advising all of them on how to market and communicate sustainability issues better. Okay? And one of the things we've looked at is if we communicate the carbon footprint and the emissions, in the same place as the information on the flight, does it change consumer behavior? The answer is no for leisure, yes for business. Okay? Because business travel requires now for you to do something about that. We can improve customer satisfaction without getting the customers to do anything different. And often this requires to never, ever use the S word. Sustainability, not the other one. 
Okay? And, for example, look at this one. This is part of a double pager, and the, the first page of this booklet says, and who made my breakfast today? And when you keep turning pages, there's always the photo of a supplier, and then there's some of the text. This kind of storytelling format works really well. This came from a hotel in Belfast, and they told me that their TripAdvisor ratings went up. They didn't change their suppliers. They actually just explained something about their suppliers as part of their breakfast. People were now raving about their breakfast on TripAdvisor. Before, they had exactly the same ingredients, but nobody talked about it. You're going to have to invite me again to talk about the others, because I've got four minutes left. OK? These cappuccinos that, the, you know, OK, this is a puffin, OK? A cafeteria nearby the bird reserve from our SPV stopped selling you cappuccinos during the two months where the birds are basically giving birth to their babies. They now sell you capuffin chinos. For those two months, the, coffee sp the chocolate sprinkles on top of your coffee are in the shape of a puffin. Why? Because they found it works so much better than giving you a leaflet than, that says, go and see the, the puffins. Okay? Most people in the area remember, but they remember in July that they should have gone in May and June, right? by which time it's too late. So give people something that's much more practical. And again, you know, try to find a way that your messages don't go here, but they go here. Okay? I absolutely love the idea of the 50 things to do before you're 11 and 3 quarters, and I think we could adapt that really, really beautifully. And if you look at those, every single one of those has a zero carbon footprint. Okay? Imagine the carbon footprint of doing a snail race or making a daisy chain. You know what this does? Parents actually have to talk to their kids. Right? Revolutionary. Okay? So the challenge here is every single one of these things has zero cost and zero carbon footprint. And it helps you increase the length of stay in your destination. I know it looks very rural, but you know what? You can adapt that to making it an urban Edinburgh-themed way of working. I'm just going to have finish with this one, and then I'm going to move to something to what we can do in terms of destinations, because I've got three minutes left. When you go to your overpriced Waitrose shopping experience, and you come out and you get the choice of putting a green plastic coin in one of the three urns for the local charities. At some point, I looked at that and thought, oh, I like that. So we've adapted it for a hotel, only the hotel uses cork. You know, and they put the, you know, three different urns. And that particular hotel said to their customers, every, every day that you don't want your room cleaned, we'll give you one of those. And every day that you don't use the car for a day, but you leave it in the hotel, we'll give you another one, and so on. But what they did about it is they empowered the customers. And they said, you decide where we're going to put those coins. And they work with local community around the hotel for the local community to vote which should be the three charities that we would give this money to. So the local community actually got a sense that there was a benefit from them of having those customers staying there. I haven't got the, the, the time to tell you about the s'mores or you know, the other element that we've got in there. I just want to say a few things for the last two minutes about what destinations could do. First of all, get your hotel certified. Okay, one of the indexes, one of the indicators you need to have is what percentage of tourism services are certified as sustainable. Gothenburg, 85% of hotel beds certified. Copenhagen, 75. You know what? Belfast is going to go from 10 to 80% of hotel certified in two years, right? Do you want to be beaten by Belfast, really? Or are we going to get organized with this? Second one, and you're not going to like this, okay? The carbon footprint of attracting visitors to Scotland is your responsibility. You brought them here, yeah? So from now on, you have to do a cost-benefit analysis. Counting benefits and not counting costs is cheating, right? So you can see on the vertical, this is for Barcelona, by the way, you can see on the vertical how much people spend on a holiday in Barcelona. The size of the dot, by the way, is the size of the market. And you can see on the horizontal what's the carbon footprint to achieve that. And you can do a calculation, and this is really easy to do, and I know that Visit Scotland is collecting the data to do this. You can do a calculation that says, how much carbon am I willing to be responsible for for every single pound of a customer that will come here? And you can look at markets where you'll have the best cost-benefit ratio when it comes to those two. Your marketing campaigns must change accordingly. You need to have a way of increasing or reducing the average distance that your travelers um, you know, traveled. 
to find a way of increasing length of stay, because clearly it's the best way, that most of the carbon footprint is the flight, increasing expenditure to compensate for any carbon, and optimizing methods of transport. So thank you very much for your time, and I'm looking forward to hearing Patricia Yates next.